Well, it's down to the final three models of the Cruel Boys. The Shaman, the Killer Boss, and the Killer Boss on the Great Nash Tooth. But which one do you think is going to be the trickiest one to paint? The Killer Boss? Not really, because he's not a whole lot different from the Gut Rippers. The Killer Boss on Great Nash Tooth? Again, the only difference is the big Nash Tooth creature. And that just leaves us with the Shaman. And this is the guy I think is going to be the trickiest one to paint because this guy has so much going on. He has the smoke bowl, the robes, a lot of trinkets and dangly parts, potion bottles, as well as that big massive skull on its back. When I'm looking at the box art of this guy, it's just all the colors on him work. The tone is, is kind of dim with a few bright parts on it. But I wanted to try something a little different. I wanted to remove the swamp darkness from the robes and give him a robe that looks like it's made out of flesh. But can I make it work? Let's find out. I start off with a base coat of auric flesh on the shaman's skin. I've really taken a liking to this colour. Every time I use it, it looks good, even though there's not much of it going on this guy. For the lower robes, I kept it the same colour that I've been using for the rest of the army, and that was basing it with Gortor Brown. His belly plate and the little red trinket he has was based with corn red. Now when it comes to the flesh robe, I hate painting pink flesh because I always think it doesn't turn out as good as I want it to be. But I pushed myself to try it on this guy to give him just a little bit something different. It took three layers of Cadian flesh tone to get a solid colour on the robes. For the giant skull on his back, I went with the usual skull colour of Zandri Dust, and this took two layers to get a solid colour on it. Rackhart flesh was then used on any of the raw parts, as well as the books he has on his hip. Good old lead belcher was used on any metal parts, that's the chains, hooks and the jewellery on his left arm. When the jewellery was dry, I painted some of it with Rune Lord Brass, just to mix it up a little bit. With most of the base colours on now, I shaded the skin with a tin down Antonian Camo Shade shade. It's important to tin it down slightly and just let it flow into the recesses nicely. Back to the skin robe, I shaded it with Gullman Flesh. But looking back at it now, I really should have just shaded the recess instead of putting it all over. But I'll come back to it. Agrax Earthshade was then applied to the brown robes and the skull on his back. To darken the trinkets down a little bit, I used Nullin Oil on it. But I also used it on the chains, rivets and the spikes on the skull. When it came to doing his teeth, I usually tried to go with a yellowish tint when I paint these, but this time I went with just plain Screaming Skull. I also used this colour on the stitches on the skin robe later on as well. Speaking of the skin robe, I had to brighten it back up a little bit after the Gullum and Flesh shade earlier on, but leaving the recesses alone. It was highlighting time next and starting with the brown robes, the edges were highlighted with Bane Blade Brown and the belly plate was with Wazdaka Red. The edges on the skull were brought back up with Xandri Dust, especially on its facial features. At this point I was looking at the skin robe and wondering what is there to do next. So I went with Carabug Crimson along the stitching line to give it more of a fleshy, raw look to it. The staff was based with Dark Reaper, shaded with Agrax Earthshade and then highlighted its edges with Calgar Blue. The silver and bronze parts then were highlighted with Stormhost Silver. Coming back to the skin, I really had to look through my paint collection to find Ogron Camo to highlight the skin. I bought this paint so long ago, it actually took me a while to find it. And actually, here's another few paints that I had for a long time and never really used them. 
Thousand Suns Blue was used to highlight the edges of the shaman's staff, followed by a thinner highlight of Temple Guard Blue. This pretty much finishes the shaman off, and it's time to move on to the smoke ball. I painted the ball Mechanica Standard Grey, and painted the smoke and the hand on the staff with two layers of Ultuan Grey. While they were drying, I started the potion bottles he has dangling around various parts. Corn red was used for the base colour. For the smoke effect, I used the technical paint Hex Ray Flame. I really wasn't sure about the best way to apply it, so I just used it like I would with a shade, but not letting it pull up too much in the recesses. For the hand, I hadn't given it much thought. When I found the hex red flame pot, there was a pot of night haunt gloom next to it, which was still unopened. I thought, what the hell, might as well use it on the hand and see how it turns out. With both technical paints dry, I lightly dry brushed Ultron Grey over the hand and the smoke. Back to the potion bottles, I used Wazdaka Red on the red parts and avoided the recesses. The ropes on the bottles were then painted with Mornfang Brown and the bottles corks were painted with Zandri Dust. The final thing I did was I gave the hand a final shade of Drakenoff Nightshade just to tone down the Ultron Grey dry brush just a little bit. And that's the model finished. I was really worried about how the flesh rope would turn out but it worked out in the end and it looks good. The smoke from the bowl had me a little worried also but the hex red flame made it much easier to paint. Overall I'm happy how the model turned out, he's going to be a great addition to the Cruel Boys and if you guys like this video make sure to let me know in the comments section, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.